We looked at the flam tap. We looked at the flam tap last. And uh, why don't we just take a quick look at that right now? Okay, so that we maintain continuity. Preceding the flam tap in the SPIVAC library, the Murray SPIVAC library was the flam accent number two. <clears throat> and then we moved on to the flam tap. And as we went over it, you learned that uh, there are really three notes in each hand. And as the speed comes up, re they become rebounds, right? And if we separate the hands, which is why sometimes I'll have a, a separate sound source so that we can analyze what each hand is doing because remember this technique really is like a single-handed playing technique right what is each hand doing individually and you put them together right i know there's there's some coordination involved but it's not like the typical kind of uh how would you say uh <clears throat> civilian outlook with regards to why drums are so difficult I've heard this over and over. People that, you know, either love music or love, love the dramas, but I can't, I don't know how you can coordinate all that stuff. And as we're learning, the coordination is a big part of it, of course. But really, there are guys that have all kinds of coordination down. But can you play a simple stroke? What is each hand really doing, right? So we have the flam tap. So. We can we can play it. We can play it. We can play it without a throw, or we can play it with a throw. Let's take a quick look at it. What did you get it up to? Uh, depends when I'm when I'm warm up, but um, about like ninety. Why don't you let, let's start off and see if you can play it at 60. Let's just take a look at, at the lower speed. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do you want uh, throw or no throw? Well, we really typically this is major throw. We're using the momentum that we create by by throwing uh, to carry through the edge of the third note. Even right now, you're you're playing. You're not in the center of the chamber or of the sound source. This 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 practice band has a chamber. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm using that terminology. Uh huh. So what would it look like if you just turned for it? Do that again the left. 
Okay, so it's coming along. All right. <clears throat> Definitely a three finger grip. Right. And it's definitely a wrist turn, whether we throw or not. This is a regular wrist turn. So go ahead and put the metronome up to, uh, put it up to 80. See what it looks like. You've lost your throw. Right? That's what a silver tempo. Okay. The speed, whatever's going on in your mind, because now you have to control three rebounds at a faster speed. But if we're at, let's see, you're at grade 80. Why you're here because we're carving away at this thing. So if we're this motion. It's not it's not this motion. It's this motion. Here, just do this with me. Just put, the you pray the, on, put the sticks on the surface. <clears throat> also, you have a propensity to start to, to lose playing right in the center. Okay. Good. That's the idea of playing on a dime. You've heard of that, right? So if you just put this, you, you, first we, we want to find the floor. Come up. There's our floor, right? And, we, and let's just rest the beat, the sticks on the surface. It'll change it a little bit. It, it will change how it feels as you go up just a little bit because you've, you're resting the beads on the surface and it, it changes it. But it really it'll help to give you. We just we want this, right? We just want to come up something like this. This is like a Richard Martinez thing. Right? Should we come up like that? Come back in. Let's see what happens. Come up. Come up. Come up more. See? The elbows will react if you ask. You see? Now your arms are now it's reacting. So we're we're coming up <clears throat> to here. We don't just start to do it. It's a, it's a reaction to the wrist pronating <clears throat> or leaving the bead down or wrist. Richard Martinez says the fixed point in the universe. Or 
Dick Wilson, and we're on the steering wheel practicing, you know, while we should be focusing on the road. And here we are, but we're drummers, so we can focus on the road and <clears throat> practice this motion. Okay, so you see, you come up, the stick is, and there's that idea, idea it's just dangling. <clears throat> But you have to leave the assemblage. So you can you can see it here, can't you? You can see my arms reacting. Yep, that's better. You see, that wasn't happening while you were making throws at eighty. Now stay with. Me. So now let's complete complete this circle. Okay, and now all you're going to do is here. Just do it in your right hand for a minute now. Let's do it in your right hand. Okay. Now you're just going to turn your wrist. Now as you turn your as you turn your wrist. As soon as I start to cock my wrist, as Murray Spivak would say, you cocking, cocking the wrist, <clears throat> that motivates the downward motion of the form. So watch, as soon as I, it's an immediate reaction. Go do it. It just comes down, doesn't it? Yeah. Now throw for thump, do that and let it bounce three times. That was four. That was four again, which is cool, right? See, there's plenty of rebounds there. Three. Now, why are you lifting up at the end? Good. That was better. You see, watch. I'm leaving it on the surface. Yeah, we don't lift up at the end. Try it again. Do that in the other hand. Okay, and now you're not leaving. Now you're not leaving the beat on the surface, and that would change a, li a little bit, wouldn't it? If you leave the beat on the surface, it feels like this going up. This is Richard Martinez. <clears throat> if you go up <clears throat> and you leave the beat on the surface, try it with me. It's, it's really easy, you know, it's like, this gives you the whole thing there, okay? And then we have this feeling of down where the turning towards the ceiling motivates, motivates, watch, motivates the downward motion, and then we complete our stroke. Okay, but if, but if we go up and we don't leave the bead on the surface, it feels just a little different. That's Somehow now this assemblage <clears throat> ha, it is activated in a different way. I, I can feel a little more tension throughout the arm assemblage. Not a support. Because there's a different kind of countervalence. What's important is that you recognize it, that you become accustomed to the distinction in, in how one feels relative to the other. <clears throat> we're not, we're, you know, we're not studying the human body as, as though we were going to become an orthopedist. However, it is interesting, isn't it? Because we know that this is a lever system. So it feels like this going up now. Just a little different. But the down will feel the same. Down will feel the same. Just make one note. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Now put the metronome on. <clears throat> put the metronome on, on seventy-two. Okay. The thing with the the thing with the throw is that you know we, we've been here, which is then I, then I kind of start doing a bit more like. Type of molar type of thing, which is not correct. But then, if I'm if I close down, it's too much. You know, I still have to figure out where it is. That you know. Good. Yeah. And it, all you do is relax and know that the the body will will show you, and and the mind connected to the body through a meditative kind of observation with regards to what's going on. Okay, so what we're going to do 
what we're going to do is right. It's still a little tricky. And, and believe me, this is tricky for all of us, you know. Uh, metronome back to 60. That was a really good tempo. And, and I'm just going to give you a quick exercise and then we're going to move on. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to see if I can hear you. No. Let's see. I just think you're going to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay. Slow, slow the metronome down to uh, put it at forty eight. Let's see what happens. Well, you could even do it slower, I think, because there's so much momentum from the throw. But but watch. What what I want you to consider, it's better. See? Sorting it's sorting itself out, really. It's by you following this particular path. Dick Wilson would say you leave the bead down longer than you think when you make it. And when I watch you, I'm leaving my bead down subtle, but I'm leaving it down a little longer than you. I really get to hear. See, that, that will give you what you're looking for. You're not really getting to there. You're, you're doing this route. Watch, watch. Now, I, I can make a proper, see, even, even if I make a proper motion or a small, smaller motion, it's a correct motion so that, so that I still get this, you see? There's still a reaction. So I still get a change, a definitive change of angle. To really make sure that you're feeling that, I want you to come up more. And, and create this change of, of angle. Try it again. Just show me where you're going to come up to in the right. There. You're not doing that consistently. That's where you need to get to every time. Again, every time. There. Come on, every time. Get all the way up. Better. See, you're leaving the bead down longer, aren't you? Okay, there we go. Get up to that position. Now just play alternating, let's play alternating throws. In fact, put the metronome down to 40. Oh, hold on a minute, just leave, hold on, just stay with me. Here, let's just play quarter notes. Metronome 48. Ah, different than what you're doing. There you go. You just need to practice that. The rebound thing, that's happening, right? Okay? I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, so let's see. Let's just see if I... <laughs> it's pretty slow for a rebound. Hold on a sec. It's too slow, but hold on. What can we do? Still play a flam type, but it's on, now it's on the wrist. Kind of cool. Takes a certain other, other kind of discipline. Gotta get ah, nice. Oh, you thought it would be easier. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Come on, get to that position. So this is all about the throw, isn't it? Because all we're doing is throwing and turning twice. Oh. Funny, it's short circuited some part of your brain. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There. 
There you go. See, there's plenty of time to come up. That's a good exercise for you. Okay? So we'll just have you do that 40, from 40 to 52. Nice and slow on the wrist, just to give you the feeling of the throws. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll, st we'll start with just throws. So for 40, 40, it's going to be quite slow, and you're just going to be going. And you know, instead of giving you a an actual number of rows, I, sometimes I've done it that way. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to meditate for a minute. When you feel as though this is kind of locked in and comfortable, then you can go. Okay. And then when you're done with that, go back, check to see if your throws are happening. Take a look in the mirror or mirrors if you have some set up. That's why mirrors are helpful. It's like, there it is. There, yep, that looks that looks good. It locks it in. It's very helpful in terms of practicing. Yeah, because I don't think the problem is necessarily the rebound. I think the problem is just the throw. I think my rebounds are fine. Uh, everyone's hitting it, they're fine. <laughs> That's why we're working on the throw. <clears throat> I didn't, we didn't get into the rebounds. I said, can you now just let it rebound? Uh, uh, for multiple multiple bounces, and it worked just fine. See, so we already tested that, and you're right. That seems to be working. Okay, so cool. <clears throat> Believe it or not, we're still working on the throw. We will be for some time. It'll come in. It'll come into play because I'll challenge you with some other stroke, and you'll just like, are you really throwing? And you go, oh, maybe I'm not. <laughs> and then you'll be able to fix it, and you'll be able to fix it more quickly. Okay, now we have now we have the Swiss triplet, right? <clears throat> That's the next stroke. <clears throat> What's that? One of my favorites is David Garibaldi's, uh, you know, groove on the hi hat. So the, the Swiss triplets, right? It's one of his famous grooves. It's Swiss Swiss triplets on the hi hat, and it's, it's beautiful. I love it. The Lenny White does that all over the place. Which first returned to forever. Yeah, right? Oh man, it sounds so good. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, it's something that can be used in a lot of different ways. It can, it can be straightened out. It doesn't have to be triplets, right? We can think of them as groups of three, as straight eights, you know? Yeah. So that we're playing over the bar line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now we're going to think of it as rhythm. We're in six. So let's let's just think about the stroke for a minute. Okay. So you see, so really all we're doing today is putting together uh, particular strokes that involve one or more of the seven basic strokes, and that's it. It's all there is, and you're going. You're going to see that there'll be <laughs> there'll be connectivity between the last stroke, <clears throat> the flam tap, and the Swiss triplet. So let's see what those similarities are. Let's see what's different about them, right? Now, once again, so in reality. There's just two notes in each hand. It's doubles, yeah. It's like doubles. We can play without a throw. Yeah, it's just that plays down. Right. They're, they're separated in a different way. Yeah. But there's still doubles. And we can and we can we can separate doubles in a, in in a, in different ways. But that's not where we are. We're separating them in this particular way. <clears throat> And you'll see as we move along that we can separate doubles in, in, in other ways. Okay. So, just go ahead and play that on the wrist for me. Let's see what it looks like. Nice and slow. Hmm? Nice and slow. Take your time. That was good. Okay, stop. Okay, this, well, we've never worked on this stroke. 
and and for whatever reason, because of some cool David Garrett, Garrett yeah, I, <laughs> I totally get it. See, this is this is in your. This is something that you, you've either used before, but maybe in a different way. And so now we're approaching it in this very kind of a remedial setting. We're on a practice path, got the metronome out, we're looking at the stroke. And so again, we're going to look for symmetry. So the both hands are doing the same thing. I think what you were doing is you were throwing in the right and the left was just doing this because you were doing something on a I hat or whatever, which was cool, right? And we do all of that stuff. But we're gonna we're gonna try to make a throw for two notes in both hands. Uh, so look what's happening. You see, there's connectivity already. Because we just came out of you playing a flam tap, which is a throw in each hand, but three turns or a throw in two turns, however you want to think of it. Yeah. You have three notes in each hand. Now we've just got two notes in each hand, and there's they're split, as you mentioned. So that way you're going to get ah 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 say ah. So for the first flam, I'm I'm I am I'm making just a little note. I am making a little note just to get started, and it's an opt into it. Ah 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 ah. Throw the map, just like the rock. Gotta come up. Okay, now, now, there's what's happening. So the first, so the first left is an upstroke, right? That's right. Makes sense, yeah. Right. <clears throat> Unless we're playing it the other way. Yeah, it makes sense. However, what's happened? Even though we're now we're really slow and we're just on the wrist, you have lost your throw again. I know, but we're going to get it back in a minute because now you're because your mind is other places. Now you're thinking about a different combination of sticking. Or placement of notes. Yeah, so for what we're going to do, Raph, we're going to put lead and feet on the surface again and we're just going to get up to here. Yeah, this, see this simple thing? Look, just says that. Yeah, and then you throw and the forearm comes down. There, that's what you lost. See, it's going to go like this, watch. So you have to decide how high you're going to come each time. Right, so it's ah, uh, see, look at the ah, 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 We're always getting to this place. Where do we decide if we're going to play it more quietly? Then maybe we're only getting to here. But, uh, but the left row is of lower, lower volume, right? But no, they're the same. Okay. I mean, looking. <clears throat> let's let's talk about this just real quick. We're looking at, at the written music, right? It's so so. I know it's just a, a stroke, but if you were given, you know, bolero, it's just a, 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 a rhythmic phrase over and over and over, right? And so we're just looking at a rhythmic phrase, perhaps. And if you don't see accents, then why would one hand be louder than the other? Okay, so go ahead and play. <clears throat> so. I got up to. On. We're going to get up to in the right. Enter of the surface. Here's what I want. So it's slow enough right now. Slow it down even more. I'll get you a tempo in a minute. I want a really big throw. I want you to come up. I want you to prove that you can feel this. I know you can do this. It looks right. See? See how they look? See how this looks? 
This is your this is your old pro. This is the old draft. Now we've got the old draft wasn't that bad. So I don't mean to be tutorial. <laughs> See, but I you're not really you're no you're coming up, you're coming up, you're coming up using the bicep muscle. Okay, see, so you're coming up like this. You're not, you watch. You're you're. you're let, we'll do it. I'll spend a minute, minute with you. Now let's put the bead on the surface. Ah, oh, come on. Okay. And let's let's just hold the elbow to this. No, do it in your right. I was I was watching you right at that last moment. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Right, but it, yeah. Well, I would I wouldn't get to it that way. But just come on up and don't have the elbow come out. Yeah, and make a throw. Yeah, so you can do it. See, that's different. Watch this. And by the way, see, this is why you can't come up very high. Watch, put the sur put the bead on the surface. Don't let your elbow come out and try to come up really high. What happens? Yeah, it drags the bead towards you, doesn't it? Come on, come on up higher. Now you have to lift your shoulder and you you're trying not to let your elbow out. Hey, come on. You can't keep the bead in the center. That's maybe why your, your beads start to wander out to the side. You're compensating. Yeah, you see, it's real tight here. Feel how tight it is? Come on, come up, up a little higher. You might have to, come on, come on up. How high can you come up? I'm all the way up here. Tight, isn't it? It may, yeah. Now, now go ahead and do this. No, no, no. Uh, you lost, we, we lost each other there. It's okay. See, the bead will come towards you. Mm -hmm. And it, don't punch your first finger. We can maintain a good grip. It really gets tight in here, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so let's come back down. Now the bead slides back out to the center where it should be. Now to come up, leading from the wrist, and leave the bead in the center so that it doesn't get pulled towards us, I come up like this. Don't punch your first finger. You see, it's not as tight in here. There, that's what it should look like. Now go ahead and pull your elbow towards you. Um, it's, really. Right. Well, that's what you're doing, but the re that's what your motion is, really. And the reason, so you only come up to here before it starts to hurt. Now, just, just stay with me now, just for fun. Just do what's wrong, so we can banish this from your thinking, and from your your from what it is you your body is feeling. So you just come up to here. No, keep your elbow by your side. Come on up to here. See, it's easy, it doesn't hurt yet, does it? <laughs> I say, can I have a bigger throw? And you can't give it to me. So I want you to come up like this, so that if you wanna keep coming up, it'll look like this. Yeah, powerful. That is. All that weight of your body looks wrong. And you're leading with your wrist. Right. That's where you come up and you're going to play two notes. Come on, do that again. That was really nice. See? You fixed it. If you maintain it. No, on the wrist. Real slow. Watch. Uh, uh. That's all it is. Over and over. Do that in the other hand. I'm always just afraid of of not being the wrists uh, driving this and just being, you know, be pushing out of myself unconsciously, you know? But one of the ways you'll be able to tell is if you are leading with your elbow and mimicking it in another way. You're going to come like this, right? Well, then what you'll get is you won't get the stick coming up straight. It, it won't follow the, what is it, the, uh, uh, the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the orbital plane. Okay, that was a Dick Wilson uh, saying that some of us memorized. Okay? The axis of rotation is perpendicular to the orbital plane. These leave weird outgoing messages. Please leave a message. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> he didn't do that one, but it, 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 I would have been like him to use something like that. Okay, so you see, look, 
I, I don't lose this. Now, if I leave with my elbow, watch what happens. You've lost it. Ah, okay. Go ahead and do that. To prove to yourself whether or not you're leading with your wrist. You can leave this. Don't punch your first finger. So, what, what are you doing? That's not what I was doing. You're doing something a little different. My, my, my perpendicular plane was further back on the pad. Mm -hmm. So find the floor. No, just come come down with your left, or your doesn't matter. But just forget forget this other hand for a minute. Forget your yeah. You're just and stop pointing your first finger. You're going to really need the first finger and thumb and the middle finger to have a proper three finger. Okay, you're at the floor. Wherever that stick is, coming out away from the surface towards the butt end. That's where you're going to put your perpendicular play. Now, if you want, you can put the bead on the surface. Kind of what I was doing, I think. Go ahead and put your bead on the surface. Just touch. There you go. Now you're going to come up and you're going to follow that perpendicular plane, leading with your wrist and letting the elbow do what it would just there. Come up higher. There. Now, now, and, and just follow that back down, right? Follow it down, Ooh, follow it back down. And you can feel the friction. The two are rubbing against each other. Now go ahead and, I wish you wouldn't point your first finger as much. Now, what, now I want you to try doing molar. Lead a little bit with the elbow. Come back, no, come back down. Sorry, I should have come back. Yeah, it's, those, those it's, away. Yeah, it's, 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 Okay, now, oh, oh and the, what the third one would be, the third one would be where you, do your pre this lesson graph throw, which was you were coming up and help holding your elbow to your side so that you were sure you were going to keep contact with your perpendicular plane. But what happens is you can't come up very high because it all gets stiff and you start to drag the bead. So now the bead has left the, the, the fixed point in the universe. Okay. So the way to practice this is by creating this, we're calling it a perpendicular plane. See, it's better already. That's where it has to come now. Come down and play two notes. Sorry. No, on the wrist. That's all it does. Over and over. Make sure you come up high enough to prove. There you go. That's what a Swiss triplet does in one hand. Can you put the two together and maintain that? Better. Come on up nice and high so you can prove to yourself Think about all of the different aspects we discussed. There you go. There you go. Uh -huh. Keep picking it up at speed ever so slowly. Slow. Don't lose that motion. Don't lose that motion. All the way up to the right. All the way, losing it in the right. Right now. Right there at that speed. Okay. So is it about? Okay. So it's at about 60, you start to lose that motion. Just a little. If you really focus on, yes, you have this. It's just the discipline of recognizing what it is and then applying it consistently. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have you play it, Swiss triplet, going both ways, of course. On the wrist, starting at 40. <clears throat> And we're just going to have you take it up, perhaps then to 48, right? Then maybe to 52, and then and then to 60. And I want you to work on it. So stay with me for a second, and work on it at those different speeds. And then once you feel like, well, I'm at 60, and I really am, I really am honest to goodness, 
Let's see. So, and then it starts to comes up. So once you're once you're at 60, now first of all, if it's at 60. Could be either wrist. Don't play for a sec. It could be wrist, or it could be rebound. Okay. Go ahead, put the metronome on at. Uh, go ahead and put it on at uh, sixty. It's a good exercise for the throws, similar to the other one, isn't it? And it's a good exercise for rebounds, and that's where we're going. If I can get it in right now. So go ahead and put it on at 60. And I want you to play it on the wrist. Now rebound. <laughs> you can't do it. Ah! I busted it again. Let it bounce, Raph. Slow, it's too slow for rebound. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to put it at 52. Stay with me. Like, that's even slower. So there's rest. There it is. We can get this thing pretty slow if you really have a, a narrow fulcrum. OK, so you're going to have to work on this. We're only going up to 60. And I want you as you get to around, as you get to about 52 or 60, practice it, wrist, and then see if you, and then see if you can create. Just make a throw and let it rebound for me. There. Um, don't forget the throw. Come on, all the way. See, you've lost your throw. Go to the throw. Show me all the way up. There. All that momentum uncoiling. And you just hold that stick with a three finger grip. Let it bounce multiple times. There. You can do it. All right, good. Okay. You need the throw. You need the proper three finger grip, narrow fulcrum. You need the knowledge of the timing of the motion so that you're at the surface long enough for the stick to bounce three times and you come up when it's just appropriate. We're not even talking about that. Let's, let's just keep it very simple. You essentially have the basic overview of the Swiss circuit. Now we're going to take it just to put a bow on it. Now we're just going to take it to another place that is still, of course, connected to everything we've just worked on, right? Because we only have seven basic strokes, and we're just going to mix and match, right? Before you know it, we've got like a Mahler symphony written. With all these different, there's so many different ways to imagine. That's why Dick Wilson in the Modern Drummer Technique article talked about is the like put on, right? It's like, well, there's 78. You know, uh, rudiments. <laughs> it's like, what? Everyone's freaking out. There are. Well, there are probably a lot more. If he could, he could, he would just oh, create strokes by combining different rudiments. And so maybe there are 26, maybe there are 126, depending on who you ask. Okay. So, metronome on. Metronome on at 60. Let's see if that works. Let's 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 play some doubles and roll strokes. Because we'll be, we want to be sure to get doubles and roll strokes in as, as consistently as possible. So here, here we are at 60 on the wrist. And, 
and, and you're right. There's it, it feels a little slow for rebounds. We could, but let's keep it on the rest now. That's what feels natural to me. We don't have a throw for momentum to help us rebound. Say again, son. Because now, now, unlike the Swiss triplet, where we have the throw to create momentum for the rebound, now, now we're turning twice, uh, and it, it, it feels it, we could, we could, but but it, it's a, kind of slow for rebounds here. That's okay, I think. Stay with me. Want, I, I, no, I want you to keep this on the wrist. I'm, I'm taking this on. Seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll and counting. Seven stroke roll and counting. How are you going to count it? That's um, Two ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four. At this speed, it could be either. When it gets faster, it's easier to count just up to four. Stop, stop. Again, isn't that, this is what's fascinating, and, the, and, and this, this is what will improve. The more consistent you are, you've been very consistent about coming in and applying appropriate consideration to all things. Murray's feedback technique. Okay. Now you've lost your thrill again, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know because it's not built in, not not built in, and now it's coming out of something else. Now it's coming out of now it's coming out of this. See, but we, the throw should still one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But see, look, I still get this. You did this, leading with your elbow, but so little that if you created your perpendicular plane, it might not even leave it. That's pretty sneaky. Uh, you know, I don't know how you'd come up with it. It would, on some micro level, it probably is leading, leaving because you're leading, you, you did something like this. This, this was your throw. When you watch this back, something like this. But just look, kind of looks right, doesn't it? I'm really leading right here. Try it. Let's do what's wrong for a minute. Just so that we know what we were doing. No, just a little throw on your left. Just a little tiny, little elbow first. It was nice and smooth too. You didn't wait or anything. You just, before you, before you ever had a chance to realize it was wrong, you were like up and down or out and in. Do it again. No, you didn't wait at the top. You didn't wait at the top. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Okay, that's not it. Show me what a throw looks like. There. Very different, isn't it? Now, go ahead and play a seven stroke roll at 60. Do without the metronome. It's okay. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, got the the rest. Uh -huh. Play first of all, it'll help wrap. Play your doubles. Play your doubles with a, a, a not as not as much volume. In other words, you won't be turning so high. What? Well, just stay with me now. Let me just figure out how to help you as quickly as possible. First of all, this whole thing is hanging, it was very hangy, like the elbows leaning against my body, like I'm doing, it has some of this feeling. Ah, it just rest there. Very relaxed. Just relax as you can be. Okay, so just stay with me. So if we're doing this, 
Let's do it nice and slow. It's too fast. Because now you're not coming out of rebounds. Now you're coming out of two wrist turns. It's yep. like, where do I go up? When do I come up? What do I do? Okay, so nice and slow. No metronome. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So it's not even an upstroke. Just one, two, three, four. And while this hand is playing, this hand can make a, a motion. Ah, uh, come up high to prove that you understand what that motion is. Ah, uh, yeah, you always pulled the beat up early. That, <laughs> but that's it, you see? That's what you weren't doing. That's what a, a, a throw looks like coming out of uh, doubles. Turn, don't turn so high. Turn, turn lower for your doubles. So you're down nice and low. Uh, uh, come on, come on, get it up. Come on up, up, yeah. There, now you get a nice, solid accent. Do it again, yes. You just have to do that over and over and over until you're crying. <laughs> it feels different when it's, when it's, it's true. It does feel different when it's not rebounds for some reason. And maybe, maybe not, but we're not sure yet. Uh, maybe out of rebounds you'd have a problem. We don't know yet. But, but you fix this. Metronome at 40. Okay, it's, this isn't even an upstroke. There's no upstroke. It's just really a throw. You're not coming out of having just played two notes and having to move within the context of making notes. It's an up, not an up stroke. That second stroke roll, and it's the throw we're looking for on the left. One, two, three, four. You know what I suggest? I suggest you count seven. One, one, two, three, four, five. During five, five, six, then it might come up. Come on, all the way up now. All the way up. Get to that position. Yeah, come on, get up there. There. Doubles smaller, smaller doubles, smaller doubles. There, like come on up though. This why is it because they're small? You now you can't come up as much. Why? Come on up more. Bigger accent, bigger motion. There. Come on up. There you go better. Smaller doubles. Big throw for you immediately means loud doubles. I don't know why. I love the way Vinny, when I first heard Vinny, uh, that bootleg, I think he created himself on a Walkman under under his floor tom of the of the uh, Dave, Dave Boroff double digit IQ band. I think it was at a place called the Flying Jib. And he would play these really quiet doubles and then they go, Whack! I always love to say, you learn. We don't only play doubles, but learn to keep the doubles down and so that you can play pianissimo and then play a big accent by making a big motion. Hmm. Try it. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up higher. Ah. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good, good. Now you're playing with side deck some dynamics. Now you're not just another UK rock drummer. There it is. Go the other way. Much better, dude. Much better. Come on all the way up. Uh huh. There. See, it really it feels like you've got all this pent up. Like you've got all this uh, much better. See, you've got all this pent up energy. You've got 
all this energy. It's not just some thing moving through the through the universe, it, through the air. It's this you've created this pent up energy. That's burning. Isn't that what? That's what Dick Wilson used to say in the Modern Drummer article uh, about Carlos Vega. He talked about Dick Wilson and not being all uptight. And you're like a panther in the forest. Waiting, waiting to pounce. <laughs> ah, right? That's the feeling. So eventually this thing will will come up, Ralph. <laughs> eventually they won't just be quiet. Eventually it'll it'll turn into it'll turn into rebound. Turning a pretty high, narrow fulcrum, doubles, but I didn't lose the motion. I still came up. Even I'm turning now, I'm tur am turning high, and then I'm coming up, and it's all wrist with a narrow fulcrumed grip, right? Which you felt today. That was Richard Wilson. You can't see it until you can feel it. You felt it. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Turning off the recording. <laughs>